Hey everyone, so this video is more just a few interesting features I found of the differences between Adobe's Premiere Rush and Apple's Final Cut on iPad. So let's go ahead and start with Adobe's Premiere Rush. So when you open up a project in Premiere, you'll find that the uh, space is very clean, very uh, conducive to just the viewer and the timeline. You can open up uh, this side window and browse your files, which is kind of nice. Uh, and then you can close it out. And then you have just small little tools around. It just allows me to focus a little bit more on the work that I'm doing. So right out the gate, you'll notice there's a lot more features uh, on screen on the user interface in Final Cut. And that's to be expected because it is a bit more, or quite a bit more powerful of an editor than Premiere. So you'll see a few more things on screen. You can move things around and adjust things and make things a little bit more easier for the way you like to edit. So that's just one thing you'll notice is there's a few more things on screen with Final Cut. So one thing I like about Premiere is the CTI stays in the middle, so you don't have to move that around or try and get your finger or your pencil on the CTI indicator at the top. You can just quickly move the timeline to the CTI, so you can pretty much drag anywhere. It gives you a very large space to put your finger and drag. So with Final Cut, you can use your finger to drag the timeline to where you want it on different clips, but then you have to use your finger to position the CTI uh, onto whatever clip you want. Uh, it's not too terribly hard, but it is a little bit more finicky to actually have to do a whole move and then move the CTI. The one thing I do like about this though is there's sometimes where I am wanting to see ahead of what's going on, what clips I want, and then make little cuts I'll use the pencil because it's a little easier to see. Um, sometimes I want to see what's ahead of me and then just quickly make some cuts because then I just know what's you know ahead. Maybe there's a few images I want to line up. I do like that I can just kind of move the CTI over here, work over here, or move it over here and see what's in the past. I do like that feature of Final Cut. One thing that is difficult though with Premiere is when you're doing precise cuts. So if I want to do uh, line up one of these cuts over here to a beat and I have this selected. If I wanted to line up just to this little beat right here, then I would have to tap this clip. The whole timeline will move and then I have to like move the uh, edge of the clip to where I want it and then slide the whole timeline back to the beat and then put it on the beat itself. So that is a little bit more finicky in Premiere. Another thing I like about Premiere is if I'm playing a video and then I want to just move somewhere else, the video stops playing and allows me to position the timeline or whatever where I want it. So that's something I've just kind of gotten used to. I don't think there's a good or bad of either. This one, as I play the video, I can move the timeline. So there's probably benefits of that where I can move the timeline have the video continue playing, and then I have to come up here and push the stop button. So there's a little bit of extra steps involved with playing and quickly doing edits. I can't just stop and have an edit. I have to go and actually push the stop button. But that's a feature that uh, could be a benefit or could be uh, something negative. It just depends on how you use your editor. So in Premiere, to do pictures or a picture in picture, um, it's a little bit more finicky. It's not difficult, but it's a little more finicky. So if I wanted this image right here to go over this video that I'm talking about, what I have to do is I'll tap on it, bring up the crop window, and you have to do everything via sliders. So you can type in values. Let's say I want to go like 75%, hit enter. You can type in your value or you can just use your slider and make the image as big as you want it. And then you have to use your sliders over here to reposition it. So it's not super hard. It's a little bit more finicky because you can't tap on the image on screen and move it where you want. Uh, the only part I dislike is let's say I have a second image. Sometimes I'll do a stack of images showing the light progression. If I have another image over here that I want to move, 
there's no way to copy the settings from this image and paste it over into these. I just have to remember what these values are and then go over here and then type them all in on each image. So if I have like six or seven images, I have to do that. I can't copy and paste uh, values from the first to the next images. So one feature I really like about Final Cut is the ability to do your picture in picture via the viewer screen. So if I have this, you know, random picture that I want to do picture in picture, I can just tap on the screen. I can scale, I can move things where I want. I can rotate. Um, I can just do a whole bunch of stuff and you can snap to grids or whatever. Uh, and I love that I can do it all in the viewer window. You can actually go over to the inspect window for more options. You can type in uh, certain values or wherever you want to place it. You can scale, um, you can uh, rotate, you can reset your rotation, whatnot. Uh, and then you can actually crop within this. So if I wanted to crop this down onto just the color meter here and then go back, I then can use that image and move that around. I can also change the anchor point of the image to rotate in the center of the image or the cropped portion of the image or keep it on the center of the actual image, which is hidden. But there's just a lot more um, crop and rotation and picture-in-picture uh, -picture features, I think, in Final Cut Pro than there are in Premiere. So with Premiere, you can use the Apple Pencil. You can move and slide and grab and tap images and whatnot. With Premiere, it does feel like you can use the Apple Pencil, but most things don't feel like it was made for the Apple Pencil. One of the big things with the Apple Pencil that I find a little bit difficult is I want to grab onto this slider and slide it. A lot of times I'll end up tapping the value input and then I have to like either bring up the keyboard and type it in or just try and get rid of the screen altogether and quickly grab onto the value. So, so the pencil is definitely very usable in Premiere, but Final Cut feels like it's more made for the Apple Pencil. So like I mentioned, you can use the pencil in Premiere, but I feel like it's just made to work in, in Final Cut, obviously because it's an Apple product. But one of the things is the hover scrubbing is very nice. You can just hover your pencil over wherever you want and then you can tap and then decide to make your edit. So that's very nice. The two main features are really the hover scrubbing and then you can do the drawing. So if you wanted to draw something on the screen, then you can animate that in. So that is very nice with the Apple Pencil in Final Cut Pro. With Premiere, there's no variable speed playback. So when you push the play button, you get the normal speed and that's the only speed you can go. There are some other buttons on the side. This one goes forward frame by frame and this one goes forward clip by clip, which is kind of handy. But I generally don't use these when I'm editing and I want to get to another clip, I'll just tap on it. And with Premiere, since the CTI stays in the middle, it brings your timeline exactly to the middle. So I generally don't use these. I much would rather have a variable speed playback. So Final Cut has variable speed playback. You have the play button up here, and then you have your two buttons off to the side. These will, as you tap on them more, they'll play your video faster or reverse your video faster or at variable speeds. So these don't have any extra buttons off to the side to manually select clips via a button. And there hasn't, there isn't any other place in Final Cut that I found to do so. Obviously it'd be nice to have the best of both worlds in both apps, but generally, like I say, I will tap on the clip as I want to use it. So I don't really need a button up here to select the next clip or the previous clip. So if I had to choose one option, I definitely like having variable speed playback in the video editor. Okay, editor Austin here. Uh, I just found out that the uh, buttons to the left and right of the play button, when you're playing, they actually are the variable speed control, but when you're not playing, they are the clip selectors. So it does look like Final Cut has the best of both worlds.
One feature that I do really like in Premiere is whatever the CTI is positioned on, the clip will be selected. So if I wanna use or find values of things, the CTI will select that clip. So if you look over here and you've seen the values that I've changed on these picture in picture, when this one, when I just move my, uh, the timeline under the CTI, you see the values in here change. It'll change over here again once this is auto-selected and it'll change back down here once this one's auto-selected. So I really like the auto-select feature in Premiere. So with Final Cut, there is no auto-select of your clip. Whatever clip you have tapped on or selected is the clip that will stay selected. Um, I suppose there's a benefit for this. I have not found one myself. I generally want whatever's under the CTI to be selected uh, because obviously it's playing in the viewer. It should be selected on the timeline in my head. So there's no way that I found to do this in the uh, settings. If you have found a way, leave it in the comments. I'd love to know. But uh, that's one feature that I think is strong in Premiere is you have whatever's under the CTI is auto-selected. And I wish they would put this in a firmware update because with the Apple Pencil, having the ability to auto-select as you hover scrub would be a really nice feature. So these are just a few editing differences and similarities I've found between the two apps as I've been using them. Hopefully you've found this useful as well. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments field. I'll do my best to answer them. And thanks everyone for watching.